This uh, business meeting will uh, come to order pursuant to notice on February 2nd, 2023. The Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs is meeting to consider the committee's rules and funding resolution for the 118th uh, Congress. Uh, before uh, we uh, take up that vote, I just want to take a moment uh, to welcome uh, two new senators uh, to the committee. Uh, Senator Blumenthal, welcome. And Senator uh, Marshall has also uh, joined us as well. Um, and I want to congratulate Senator Blumenthal on becoming the chair of the Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations and to Senator Romney on becoming the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Emerging Threats and Spending Oversight. Uh, I would also like to especially welcome uh, Member Paul in his new role as the ranking member uh, on this committee and uh, for the rest of my colleagues who are returning to the committee for what we hope will continue to be a, a very uh, productive committee. Uh, certainly in the last session with Ranking Member Portman, we worked on a bipartisan basis to pass a, a great deal of significant legislation that strengthens security of our communities and ensure that uh, government uh, works effectively. And I look forward to having another collaborative and productive Congress with our new Ranking uh, Member, Senator Paul, and with uh, all committee members so we can continue uh, this uh, tradition. Um, to the, uh, certainly to that end, uh, we meet today uh, to uh, adopt our budget resolution and our rules. And with that, turn it over to Ranking Member Paul if you have some opening comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate the fact that uh, we've met privately and are talking about trying to work in a collaborative fashion. One of the things that I've been examining and looking at for the last two years are the origins of the COVID virus. A million people died in America. It's said somewhere between 6 million and 15 million worldwide. At least a substantial number of scientists now believe this leaked as an accident from a lab in China. There's a great deal of information because we fund this research in China. It actually became available in the last month that through an unclassified report from the Intel Committee in the House, that not only do we fund civilian research, but we are funding American universities that are then funding military research in China at the Academy of Military Medical Sciences. We can't make the Chinese cooperate, and they haven't been very cooperative, but our government should be more cooperative. They don't seem to be too interested in one Republican's request, but they might be more interested if we could get bipartisan requests. All we're asking for is information from NIH, HHS. We sometimes will get like a 250-page document where everything's redacted. The only information that's been useful that we've gotten in the last two years on this has really come from FOIA requests. So the federal government is so resistant to giving information to us that outsiders file these, and a lot of information has come forward. The two biggest things that have come forward that would have never come forward are that in 2018, Chinese researchers came to DARPA and they asked for money and they said, we want to create a coronavirus, but we want to put on the coronavirus a furin cleavage site, which will make it more infectious for humans. We want to test and see if we can do this. Well, when COVID-19 came out and they sequenced it, that's exactly what COVID-19 is. Might be a coincidence. It's not proof that they did it, but we know they were asking for money to do it in the year preceding the pandemic. We only know this, though, because a whistleblower leaked this information. Somebody at DARPA or somebody that worked there, some sleuth that got it off the internet, I don't know how, but we know it because of, in all likelihood, an illegal leak. But we can't even get it because when we ask, they won't tell us these things. So we only learned about this through a leak. The other thing we learned about was through a declassification. And you know, we've had a big controversy over classified records, uh, but the current president and the previous president caught up in this classification stuff. But when the Trump administration left, they declassified information that allowed us to know that three researchers in the Wuhan lab uh, got very sick with flu-like symptoms in November of 2019, and we think actually preceded maybe when the accident happened. Once again, circumstantial evidence, but not secure evidence. But these two items we only know because they sort of slipped out because someone declassified one and someone leaked one illegally. We could find out more information if our own government were more forthcoming. But my only request to the chairman and other Democrats is if you will sign letters to, a, to our own government to release information, we could learn more about possibly if this virus was an accidental leak. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ranking Member Paul. Now we're ready to uh, vote on uh, funding resolution uh, S. Res. Blank. Uh, the committee will proceed to the consideration of S. Res. Blank. The committee's funding resolution. Uh, is there any debate? 
Uh, being no debate, uh, all in favor will say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed, no. Majority of members uh, present having voted in the affirmative, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Uh, the committee will now proceed to the consideration of the committee rules. Uh, 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 is there um, any debate um, on the committee rules? Senator Scott. Uh, first, Chairman Peters, I look forward to continuing to work uh, with you and the ranking member, Paul. One thing that, I th and I think you guys have already had conversations about this, one thing um, in the last few years, something's just come up at the last minute. We don't get a, the, a copy of the bill right before we're supposed to you know, review it. Um, the, there's not a copy out there. It's noticed, and there's, n there's no bill out there. So I think you all have already had conversations about how we can improve that process. So I think the longer you can give us our, our teams to review this stuff, it'll make it easier. And then in addition to, I think it would be nice to have, uh, I don't think this is partisan stuff, but uh, you know, it'll, maybe it'll come across that way. But the, the COVID origin stuff, I think, is important. But uh, the southern border is a big deal. We just now have, um, I don't know if you follow what's happened in the Florida Keys, we now have an unbelievable number of, of migrants coming, especially from Cuba, in these little, they're little, it's like styrofoam, they're not even boats, they're just like styrofoam and tarp, and these people are dying. But we have, we had 350 people one day just come to Little Island Dry Tortugas. And so it's, it's impacting all of us. And so any, anything we can do, and I was just told uh, earlier today in Center Langford, I just already knew about it, but the, I guess it's the drones that were doing the surveillance of the southern border so they know how many people come across, they just stop them. Like we ought to, I mean, we're, we're Homeland Security, we ought to know these things before it happens. So anything you could do to, to have some hearings on that and, um, and they don't, hopefully, they don't have to be partisan, just let's get the facts. Thank you, Senator Scott. Of, of course, we want to do that, and we'll be talking about that also, making sure we have uh, adequate time for folks to look before markups. Just say a couple things. One, sometimes we do move quickly on legislation due to circumstances that require that. But I would ask all, all the members on the committee, too, to, to give us uh, your priorities uh, as well. Sometimes I have members that come to us uh, really at the last minute and say, I really want this bill. Uh, and we try to accommodate those members and get it moving very quickly, but if everyone could give us uh, the opportunity to queue it up and know exactly what's going to be before us uh, in the markup, I'd be appreciative. But certainly, we want to give members uh, adequate time to review things, and uh, we've been pleased uh, for this committee, uh, uh, both in the last session and when uh, Senator Johnson was chair as well, that uh, we were able to move a lot of bipartisan bills. look forward to continuing to do that. So thank you. Um, the, uh, there being no further debate, uh, all those uh, in favor of the committee rules will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Majority of the members present uh, having voted in affirmative, the ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. Uh, if any other, uh, that concludes our business, but if any members would like to make remarks, we would entertain those at this time. Mr. Chairman, Senator I just want to thank you for your welcome, and I'm very excited and glad to be on the committee. And uh, look forward to working with you. Thanks. Right. Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. Seeing uh, no other uh, remarks, uh, we are, this business meeting is now adjourned.